Hey everybody, welcome to What the Flick Girls, season six, the last one, episode one, all I ever wanted. Uh, Brett and uh, Grace and Alonzo, and I, everybody's name flies out of my head the moment I have to say them, I don't know what that's about. Uh, so, okay, we start with Hannah being published in the New York Times, la di da. Um, and we pretty much stay with Hannah. <laughs> well, yeah, it's a, it is a Hannah-centric episode for sure. I did like though the the little montage of how everybody reads that article and what they take away from it. That was I thought like they they nail how each character, including her parents, would would have you know what they what their takeaway would be. Yeah, mm -hmm. it definitely feels a we're back from break episode. Yes, because they I, here we all are. <laughs> my girlfriend and I just rewatched every episode of Sex in the City, and all the first episodes of seasons have that kind of experience where it's like. Oh, here's a quick refresher on this person, on this character's everything. Right. It's like this is how Shoshana would read it. Like Ray's underlining typos. <laughs> I thought that was really effective and a cool filmmaking. Yeah, the, the Tessa uh, is com just as complete unwillingness to want to read it at all. <laughs> but a really interesting way to do it by watching Adam's response yes. to it. I thought that was awesome. Yeah, and I, I think it is important to check in with the characters of girls because I always sort of forget when we come back. On a season, like where did we? What exact? What's their turmoil? What's their struggle again? Because I know they have. Turmoil. I know they have it, but I can't <laughs> remember specifically like why. Like why is Marnie a little bit discontent? Like right. what's going on here? What self-created drama is bothering them? Yeah. <laughs> that yeah, that is really hard to empathize with if it wasn't for like but, certain words at the end of sentences that make me chuckle. Yeah, and then. <laughs> Another thing that I think was good about that montage as well was that uh, it showed a lot of how these characters have grown with the exception of, and I think that's why we stayed with Hannah in this first episode, Hannah has by far the most growth yet to do in this final season, which I hope we see, and it seems like they're setting her up for it. We've seen, you know, Marnie has gone, I mean, Jessa is like, totally different from where we saw her in like season three, season four. Um, Adam, of course, Shoshana, crazy development, but Hannah is the one that I think this season we're gonna see a lot of focus on because she was, she hasn't grown or really changed. Right. Her Hannahisms have always been a central part of the conflict in the show. So let's see how that develops. But I would say like, when I watch this, it's like, what is less, you know, who has developed the most and more like, what is the current manifestation of their permanent dysfunction? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, I know that Marnie is, hasn't changed, but I'm kind of, I'm not even happy that she's with Ray. But I, but like, yes, this is where she's at now in like the most recent way she screwed up, the most recent way she starved for attention. And she, the, the most recent person to make her feel normal and special at the same time. Mm -hmm. But I, I think part of this show is, is so much about, yes, they're always gonna be a mess, but how do they make that mess work for them? You know, and I think at least with Hannah getting into the times with this very, you know, emotional outpouring and first person story, it's like, all right, if you're gonna be up your own ass, at least be able to write about it. <laughs> like if you're not gonna be able to take in the world around you or empathize or any of that stuff, at least get you right in, in sharing that with other people. And, right. and like, because she's such a mess, if she's able to explore herself honestly and to write about it in an interesting way, careers have been made on less. Yeah. You yeah. Know? And this is the episode where we're sort of seeing her try and embark on a career, but I don't know how it, well, what is she writing for? What's the name of the publication? Slag? Uh, Slag Mag or something. Slag Mag or something like that? Yes, I don't know, is named. this the right fit for Hannah? Do we think that this is where she's gonna find her happiness and fulfillment? Like, yeah, if if like your dysfunction is the spark that makes the flame of your career, like Hannah has been in a, uh, a, a rhythm, I guess, where she sparks and flames out because she can't handle, like, She's so meta and repurposing like her own weirdness instantly to something written. Whoa, something fell. It was the Hannah being like, that's not what I meant. <laughs> but like, how does she keep that, you know, the locomotive running? How can she keep it going? And is this gonna work for her? It doesn't seem so because it seems like the people who are hiring her are just, they don't really get her, and that's going to be crazy. I love the thing about like we're just hiring you for your look. I have been always wanting to hear that, <laughs> uh, but no, it's like you know she 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 clearly com does not want to have anything to do with this surf camp. Like the minute she gets there, she realizes uh, I don't want to do it. Although it was a funny montage of just her trying. Yes, no, mm -hmm. I mean, but I mean, like she's instantly quitting. But then she discovers, okay, maybe the 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 Paul Louis. There's a story. Like this is a guy who like makes a living out of this and travels the world and has this sort of philosophy on life and uh, you know. <laughs> You, you you have to watch this and you think okay does does she make a list of like I want to make out with Riz Ahmed so I'm gonna write this part for him <laughs> not that dudes have been doing that in show business like mm -hmm. since time immemorial but um 
you know, but ultimately, you know, he she wants to she wants to go on that ride with him and open herself up and, and like more things and blah 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 until he has a girlfriend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, oh, then never mind. <laughs> But I, I like that she dealt with it in a way where she didn't, there wasn't a big scene that happened. It wasn't mm. like a big, because the old Hannah, or maybe Hannah in previous seasons, because again, I don't think that she's developed that much, might have thrown like a major temper tantrum, and she just sort of allowed him to have a girlfriend. She did lose interest. She has that face at yeah. the end, though. The, 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 that mm -hmm. last shot of her face uh, around the campfire sort of implies like, yeah, this is not. Something, totally yeah, disillusioned. Something doesn't like, yeah. It was strange to me how quickly she went from the disappointment of like throwing up the morning after their tryst to essentially saying like, I wanna get out of here. And then he's like twice, he just has to ask her twice for her company and she's like back in it again. Didn't it seem, I don't know, I felt I found some like inconsistencies with Riz Ahmed's character here. Well, he made a good point, like what, we can't hang out because you're gonna write about hanging out. I mean like she was literally just gonna tootle around right. Montauk anyway. Why not do it with somebody who knows the place and could like take her to some neat places, which he finally does, mm -hmm. you know? I, again, I think there is a little tiny bit of journalistic impulse to her where she realizes, oh wait, this guy's gonna maybe show me some stuff that ordinary mortals don't see or she's, he's gonna like let me in on some secrets or something. And so at least she's making something out of the, the trip. Like she's, she's finding something that she can write about because it's not gonna be the surf class. Yeah. You know? uh, I think when I watch, you know, you've been without girls for a while, it comes back. I find myself frequently defending it to folks who are like, these are the worst people <laughs> in the world. And I try to find the one thing about it that really justifies my liking it. And, I, and that thing here in this episode was the self-awareness to have Riz Ahmed rap horribly <laughs> and have Hannah think that's the best thing in the universe. <laughs> like that's the kind of self-awareness that undercuts any like strange, justi uh, you know, inherent justification of this kind of, you know, s being full of yourself. I think people mm -hmm. are tougher on this show though. I don't know if it's because uh, Lena Dunham is the creator and the star, but it's not like we watched Breaking Bad or Mad Men or The Wire or whatever the other shows you want to point to because the characters were so likable. Well, that's a good point. The 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 difference I think with you know uh, Mad Men or The Wire is the the stakes seemed higher. The stakes mm -hmm. are high. I mean, especially when you're talking about Breaking Bad. Like the, we're talking about meth, like yeah. the, the drug underworld, a kingpin of the drug world. That's crazy. And cancer. And a lot of people can sort of invalidate the struggles that we see on girls by saying like, oh come on, it's just a breakup, or like come get oh it's just a job, like get a fucking job. Like what's your problem? They're privileged upper middle class white girls, and I hear that as well. But if you can't, you can't compare girls to like a Walter White. It's just a, they're trying to tell different stories. Well, this show clicks so quickly in and out of realism. Yeah, like it's super hyper realistic. Like I'm sure this is exactly a conversation each has had with the other. And just when it seems like we are getting to the meat of a real discussion, a realistic discussion of characters, then they go over the top. And for me, the over the top is the, the perfect you know, articulation of what's wrong with these people. So that is the discussion to me. And for others who watch it, I feel like they're like, see, they're, it doesn't even follow through on the discussion. It just turns into like this yeah. weird and joke the, and we move on. Yeah, and a lot of the characters are intentionally, I think, so over the top. Like Chelsea Peretti in this episode yes. was, a, was not, a, it was a character, right. yeah. and but pe some people that are just coming into girls might watch it and be like, "This stupid." That would, uh, you know, no one would ever, you know, talk to a potential reporter like that mm. or a potential journalist like that. Like this is so stupid. And a lot of the characters, um, Ray is sometimes over the top. Like. Uh, all of them, they have these sure. moments where they just go to the extreme of what their character could be. Marnie, oh my God, Shoshana! <laughs> I mean, I think Jessa even in season five referred to her as a cartoon. Mm -hmm. So um, we have to remember that this is, uh, at the end of the day, it is a comedy. It's intended to be humorous and humorous takes on life. So the people that sort of hate the show and uh, don't enjoy it, a lot of times I think are sort of taking it too seriously yeah. and literally, yeah, which girls, is not the point. Girls knows that it's not holding a mirror up to the world, or yeah. whatever, but it is, it is playfully exaggerating things to find the comedy in it and to make a comment about actual behavior that they've mm -hmm. moved way past, but that they're, right. they're sort of uh, spotlighting. But, like, but I think it also does find these little character moments that, that feel very genuine. Like I loved the whole thing of Marnie walking in on the conversation that Shoshana and 
Ray are having about Paul Krugman so and just instantly being like, oh God, they're talking about things that I don't understand and now I feel stupid and mm -hmm. this is the thing we, I want, I'm in love with this guy, but he's, I'm never gonna have this conversation with yeah. him and I bought the wrong coffee and oh fuck, you mm -hmm. know? Like I just, like little things like that, I think ground this show to a recognizable reality and to Characters that even if you even if they just still drive you up the wall with their incredibly bad decision making and 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 you sort of facile understanding of how the world works, you still empathize with them a little, yeah. you know, yeah. even though they're awful. <laughs> so, what would your final sort of predictions or hopes for this final season be? For me, mm -hmm. I want Hannah to find a way to like write and be happy with the writing as like the ultimate destination of how her craziness ends up. And then go back to life and not try to have this instinct to blow up. Um, yeah. I don't want her to get back with Adam. I want no. Jess and my, Adam to My break hope up. is for Adam and Jessa to stay together. I no, like I hate it. I don't want I don't want anybody to learn anything. <laughs> I don't want any big bows tied on this stuff. I think they're all gonna be they're all gonna be messy. But I would like them to at least figure out how to, like I said before, how to make that mess work for them. Mm -hmm. And in, you're right, in Hannah's case, if you're gonna be this much of a narcissist, that, that, is not, uh, that does not preclude you being a good writer. You know, you can be a completely self-obsessed person and write about that in an interesting way. And if she can sort of channel that, then, you know, she will probably always be a narcissist. But if she can be a narcissist who makes that the fuel for her, for her literature, then great. Yeah. What about you? What are you? My main, I mean, my main hope is uh, Adam and Jessa, because I, you no, know, I was rewatching season five, and I just think they're adorable together. I just think I just, for some reason, they, I really like them, and I know that I think I'm the only one that watches girls that likes that. Um, and then I would, uh, I, I echo a lot of what you were saying, Brett. I really want Hannah to find happiness. For me, she's sort of the the outlier to the group right now, because I, I think that even within Marnie's dissatisfaction for the life that she sort of found herself in, and same sort of the same thing with Shoshana, they have elements of happiness, elements of being really, you know, content with where they're at, and Hannah still hasn't really found that balance yet, so I'm hoping we see a little bit more of a creative balance and a structure in her life. But I also hear you, Alonzo, I don't want this show to be tied together with a pretty bow at the end. What we like about it is sort of the mess that they uh, make the best of. Right. So that's what I hope, but mainly Adam and Jessica. I think this more than like Sex and the City would be good for a handful of movies at different oh, eras in their yeah, life. Yeah, like like the 7-Up series. Like every so oh, often yeah. we check in and just see what every they're up to. Every seven years, that'd, that'd be, be hilarious. Yeah, I, I don't know, I see Adam and Jessa as a like fight, 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 fuck, fuck, fuck couple, yeah, you know? And, and isn't that, that fun? But I, that can only go on for so long yeah. before it just becomes exhausting. What do you exhausting. want? What do you want to see? I don't, mm, I don't know, I, I, don't, I don't want to impose any of that kind of stuff. Like, I, you know, I would, um, I would like to see, I think Shosh has the most potential of being somebody who can be really successful at whatever she sets her mind to, while at the same time still being utterly her, you know, mm -hmm. and, and as whatever crazy or, or, or self-obsessed that kind of thing can be. Um, you know, I would like Ray to be happy. I like Ray. Ray and Shosh. Shosh. And Ray I, I and I want I want a ringtone of Jeremiah saying "Shut up, Marnie." <laughs> is Jeremiah is that uh, Elijah. 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 Sorry, I knew it was something Old Testament. All right. Uh, so, girls is back. Uh, we will be back. Uh, Anna will be joining us again. So that's always great to hear from her. Uh, so join us next week. Thanks. <laughs>